Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And we got another solo album review. The newest project from Ian No, River Fools and Mountain Saints. You know, sometimes you find a debut that comes right the hell out of nowhere and shocks anyone who gives it a proper chance. And while I could argue that 2019 actually had a decent number of those, and in country it often feels like there's so much untapped talent that just flies under the radar, Ian No was one of the big ones. His project Between the Country might seem like a darker than expected indie country project until you realize the depths of empathy and intensity that filled up every crevice and that's before you realize how dark it could really get. Of course, there was the major factor of Dave Cobb giving him stellar, balanced production that most indie debuts will never see, but you also need to make quality music with that sound, and Nia No proved that he could really do it. But following it up three years later, that's gonna be a different story. Dave Cobb was not on the boards this time, instead with production handled by Andresia Tokik, who has done some work for Caitlin Rose and Hooray for the Riff Raff, and I respect that, but it did mean that I was gonna temper my expectations a little bit here. Yeah, Ian No is a terrific presence and a great songwriter, but production can make or break a lot of country, especially a lot of the sounds that call back to the past, and that's kind of been a hallmark of what Ian No has done before. But hey, I I did have expectations. This guy made one of the best country albums of 2019, one of the best of the 2010s. I think it's aged amazingly well, and I wanted to see him deliver one hell of a follow-up. So what do we get? Well, you know, I gotta be honest with this. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster for me going through this album because initially I wasn't really pulled in that much, and for the exact reason you might expect given the preamble, it was the production. But then I let myself really sink into the vibe, I gave it more listens, I really dug up the lyrics, and I was right back on board with this being one of the best albums I heard in 2022, where even if it cooled on me, the consistent strengths were so readily apparent that it'd be worth hearing regardless. You just go back to it, it all comes back like that. And yet that was two weeks ago where I had plenty of opportunities to put out this review in a much more timely manner, but I just wasn't as motivated or excited, especially in comparison with Between the Country. So I went back to give it even more listens. I'm still confident this is legit great, but it's gonna take a little while longer for its hooks to really get into you. It's a slower burn, and while it's still quite tremendous, I don't think it's better than his debut, and the reasons why can be a little tough to contextualize, so strap in. And as such, while I would normally start with some of the shifts in the production, I wouldn't say that's the primary culprit with this project, which I'd argue has a much more varied and even in some cases more melodic and textured palette in comparison with what Dave Cobb gave him, which at some points could feel a little haunted, lean, and brittle to a fault. And while that did work for many of the shockingly bleak moments that colored between the country, this project naturally plays a little brighter, a little bit more approachable, and that can downplay No's intensity, but also lets him flex the wry wit and subtle flair in his nasal drawl that pulls so many comparisons to the late John Prine. That also means that it naturally feels a little bit more contemporary, or dare I say, accessible, and thus you can sketch more comparisons. I mean, it's not like we're short on singer-songwriters these days writing melancholic music about the wildest ranges of Appalachia, where coal mining, isolation, poverty, and failing systems cause good men and women to seem a little bit unstable. Look at Pony Bradshaw, or Cole Chaney, or Tyler Childers, or Zach Bryan. That unfortunately means that Ian Noe's got a little bit more competition in this lane, but I would also still argue his sound and approach stands out, mostly in regards regards to the writing, but also tone. He doesn't feel as hard-nosed or defensive in his framing or approach to these stories, but he doesn't also glamorize them either. And while there are plenty of scenes that can get just as gristly and intense when you start peeling back some of the layers, the wider angle framing allows for a more interesting moral complexity to a lot of these stories, and that kind of puts him in a higher tier for me. There might not be much hope in what he sketches out, just a fool's hope, but it's hope nonetheless, and in the face of a world that's changing beneath his character's feet or spiraling wildly out of control, he's gonna test that hope, he's gonna push it to the brink, see what really holds them and, by extension, all of us together. But again, 
This is a slow burn. This is an album that's gonna take its time pushing and prodding at these points, where some have actually drawn parallels to how the isolation on some of these songs have mirrored the pandemic the past couple of years, where even the concept of time gets more fragmented and scattershot. Hell, it's probably not intentional, but if you're looking to reinforce a quiet, parallel current of empathy to folks who might not otherwise relate to rural Appalachia, a project like this would be a way to do it. There's connective tissue. And while at its most basic, you get the family snapshots of the two songs that comprise the title track, one male and one female, and the female one's better, it also expands from there to some very interesting character portraits, like the singer-songwriter left behind by his girlfriend, who then proceeds to self-destruct on Lonesome As It Gets, where he'll set fire to his own Christmas tree, and yet, bizarrely, it's a bright moment. Or the stunning album centerpiece of Ballad of a Retired Man, where an old Vietnam vet is reaching the end of a long life and catching some flickers of very vivid memories. And there are more songs from a veteran's point of view here. P.O.W. Blues is probably the track with the most rock-leaning snarl, and it's exactly about what it says. But the song that impressed me more here was Tom Barrett, telling the story of the kid who actually leaves those Appalachian rural towns to go overseas, fight in the wars, encounter scenes that are just as grim, if not more so, push him to the brink, and then he winds up returning home, even as he could have sworn that time would have taken these towns like it has so many others. But you know, that's kind of an interesting thing with Ian No's music. He is so conscious of how the passage of time bends around scenes like these, where it inexorably moves, and it's fascinating watching those who are caught in its wake versus those who dig in among what's left. And yet, bizarrely among all of it, it kind of feels timeless. You get the coal mining scenes of Strip Job Blues 1984, but really, how much has changed in those mountains to this day? Or those caught in the flash floods in Kentucky? Kentucky on Road May Flood, It's a Heartache, or the aging tour group constantly searching for that late night spark on One More Night, or in the darkest case, the indigenous story of burning down the prairie when avaricious Europeans moved in with the real savagery. Or hell, if you want to get very explicitly on the nose with it, Appalachian Haze is a family scene where some might think that that new development could save them. Some are going to push back against it, and some are just so consumed by their own vices to engage with either side. Now, in comparison with the previous album, the violent immediacy, it's not quite here. In another parallel with a lot of pandemic records, Ian Noah is very comfortable with you sitting with the album, really let it soak in and brood. But on the flip side to that is that it's not so much dating the music to a specific time, again, mostly because Ian Noah's sound almost feels timeless in the choice of tones and his style of writing, but in low Lowering the volume of the intensity, it's one of the reasons it might not pull you back in the same way. Now granted, whenever you do go back, the majority of the instrumentation and production is striking as all hell, with the exception of the start and the ending. Yeah, I was not wild about how the weirdly flat the vocal mixing sounded against the drippy pedal steel and that lead melody on Pine Grove Madhouse, and Road May Flood It's a Heartache plays maybe a little bit too slow for its own good, even if the pedal steel, the piano, the arranged strings, and that gentle smolder was a really nice touch. But you know, outside of that, I was shocked just how well these richer arrangements and the production worked for Ian No all the same, especially in maintaining that balance. I got a few quibbles here and there. The main vocal pickups feel a little bit rough on River Fool and Strip Mine Blues 1984, for instance, but the fiddle and the fluttery picking sound is just incredible, and Ian know bringing in some added backing vocals is absolutely the right choice. Then you got the up-tempo bass playing off the pedal steel on Lonesome As It Gets, It Can't Help But Make Me Smile. The shuffling knock off the lead acoustic line and the organ on Tom Barrett is excellent. And when Ian No clears away the mix to feel as spacious as possible, like on One More Night and Ballad of a Retired Man, he can just command your attention like no other. And I love the gentle horns he brought into the former, and even some fragments samples that he brought in for the final versus the latter really set that scene. It's really beautiful. But all things considered, these are the songs that might have a deeper core of what you might call optimism. When Ian No goes darker and minor key for the second half of the album, leans into some of his intensity, you get the simmering pianos on Mountain Saint, the scuzzy patter on Burning Down the Prairie with that kick drum keeping the pace, and the cavernous darkness of Appalachian Haze, where the pedal steel is peeling through that blackness. It's really, really potent. 
Now, strangely, for as much as POW Blues picks up a little bit more grit and muscle, it almost plays a little bit too conventional to Southern Rock for me. Don't get me wrong, it's well balanced in the low end, and the fuzz guitar absolutely works, but give the lead a little bit more muscle to match that bass line, it could probably hit a lot harder, at least for me. That being said, if he had done that, the song might stick out like a sore thumb on this project. And going through River Fools and Mountain Saints, it flows so incredibly well and feels really damn cohesive for all that effort. In a way, I'm not surprised Ian No went in a direction that feels a little bit more expansive, measured, dare I even say accessible, that still maintains its pretty solid edge. A lot of indie country acts follow in that arc off the their debut, and Noah's writing, performance, and command of atmosphere is top-notch, and that's kind of impressive actually getting away from Dave Cobb. I think the best moments of Between the Country keep that in a slightly higher tier for me, but even then, that's one of the best albums of the last decade. It would be extremely tough to match or surpass, whereas this extremely respectable effort that might be an easier introduction point than his debut, absolutely worth the purchase on vinyl if you find it, and for everyone else... Yeah, Ian No is two for two with textured, incredibly immersive, and well-balanced indie country. If you haven't checked him out yet, absolutely worth your time. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be extremely grateful. Yes, I know, I'm late with this one, and, but I really did want to get to it in a solo project because, again, I think it's one of the best country albums of the year thus far, and thus far this year's looking pretty damn good for country. So, but beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. If you guys have comments on the album, I truly hope you've heard it at this point. If you haven't, please go check it out. Otherwise, check a look in the comments down below. Beyond that, if you want to help support the channel, hey, they've got that little new, like, thank you button. That's the one-time thing. That's in right down below the video here. But, hey, if you want to actually support on a long-term basis, get albums on my schedule for that next episode of On The Pulse. That's probably dropping in a day or two. Or just talk with me on Discord or just support the channel. Link to my Patreon is right over there. Don't feel obligated. Tough times, I understand. But if you want to, options available. Till then, I'm Mark. You're watching Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.